We're in the fairly large Suffolk village of Woolpit, and this is the Church of St. Mary. And this church is um, notable, and you can see why, because of this amazing spire. Absolutely amazing spire. Look at the size of it. And, and spires are amazing uh, here because in Suffolk, we don't normally have them on the churches. And not only has it a spire, but it's got little posts or turrets on each corner and arms going between each one. It's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's on one of the main roads in the village, fairly busy traffic. There's a car park here opposite. There's even an old telephone box over there which is probably redundant now. The blossoms are coming out in the uh, churchyard. With delightful gates and wooden tops carved. A lovely curving path, tarmac and going up to the entrance. Very well kept. More recent gravestones here in this churchyard. Some older ones over here. Over this way. Particularly old one here, maybe. Let's have a look. Very difficult to read again. William Cooper, who died in 1897, age 72, and Sarah Emma. 18. Of the above. Oh, and there's some hands holding each other. It's very Victorian. And these gravestones here that I'm assuming a, a husband and wife, where the two gravestones are together. It's very difficult to read those, but I, they're two joined together, I assume. That's for a, a husband and wife. Another grand impressive headstone here with angels each side and little graves that have had a metal surround around them and there again when whenever we see these we find that they're not as kept well kept as they should be because it's difficult to get to them Got the floodlights over here to light this church and more old gravestones and monuments and headstones. Little collection here. Cross and weeds growing everywhere. This is unusual. It's well protected but it stops people from maintaining it. Lovely view of that tower here. Now that's a wonderful tower. Look at the design of that. One, two, three, four, five little windows there and a big one and this one side ones is just so imposing that was really designed and built to impress and it does impress the flint work is is in rows you can see right up Tower reaching to heaven. The churchyard extends all around the side of the church here. And the wall continues around. Yew trees here with lovely shaded 
spot with gravestones underneath them. Wonderful, wonderful. The weather today is not that bright and sunny, but on a sunny day you can just imagine how atmospheric this is. But it is today as well. Look at that scene. The old graves, stones there, headstones, and that cross. Stunningly beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The beauty of an English churchyard is idyllic. Other than the wheelie bins, which we find in every churchyard now, it would be difficult to uh, imagine we weren't in some Victorian era. Side door and look at the windows all along the top there. Was that added to later day? Some very wealthy grand people were buried here, I, I'm guessing. A collection here of crosses and monuments. These are all very Victorian looking. But this one up here is something special. Sad cross here that's fallen off or broken off with an unkempt group of graves. Atmospheric, but very sad. And here we've got a large impressive monument. And we can hear the church bells as we have a look at this. Here rest the remains of Dorothy Cobold, widow of the Reverend I.S. Cobold, rector of this parish. She died June 6, 1857, aged 86. She was greatly missed and greatly loved, I would imagine. Little addition there in brick that was added on at some point to the church with a grave in front of it. Or here, we can just stand and look up and see the size and majesty of it, really. This is in a small relatively small village in Suffolk. And there's a bench here, a little door. And that's obviously a staircase that twists around, I guess, to go up into the tower. Some nice features at the side here. Lots of ornamentation. wooden doors to the entrance to this porch. A beautiful, massive ceiling made of stone and a lovely big door with a smaller one. The door is so big that we have a small entrance. Mind your head, it says. This is like entering a big cathedral. We've got a walkway here for wheelchairs, which we'll use. The cross are here. The walls are unpainted. Area at the back here, which is where the bells 
and everything would be worked from. It's the base of the tower here, this large tower. Big arch. An impression of size here again. The ceiling is super impressive with all the windows above and below. You have to stand here and just take it in for a few minutes. It's hard to imagine that you're actually in a, a village in Suffolk because this is the type of church that you would expect to see in an urban environment. We've got a lovely tiled floor here. We've got very chunky wooden pews here. Figure, animal figure here on the end. They all seem to be different. Everyone is different. And the wooden ceilings there. This area is very picturesque. We've got an organ here, which is out of place, really. And it looks like a, an area that there actually is some musical recital, perhaps, or performances done. It's almost stage-like here. This is all rather new. It's fairly, fairly recently, I would say, all this stonework has been done carpet laid on top of it here. With some relics or pieces of stone that have come from something. Lovely little corner there with an alcove and two plain leaded windows. Small opening there. And the screen here beautiful. It's very tall, dark wood, intricately carved, and down here it's all hand-painted. I wouldn't like to say when this was done, but it's all hand-painted wood. Very tall pulpit. And we look at this amazing ceiling. With angels. various other carvings. Fabulous ceiling, fabulous ceiling. And a real gothic look at the end with the stained glass window set back within a beautiful gothic stone arch and all the windows above, the angels coming down from the ceiling. 
some quite solid gates with more pews. And a magnificent memorial with these stone pieces at the sides. Lovely altar area. Big organ. Not certain the age of this organ. Pipes are fabulous and large. I wouldn't like to hazard a guess, but if I did, I would say perhaps the early part of the 20th century. The door at the side. A beautiful stained glass window with a nice glow. This is with, with the dark area at the top with a lot of thick stone glazing and more delicate appearance in the bottom half or two thirds. And the window to the side there again looks very Victorian with plain leaded glass and just delicate tinting at the top. And a very delicate arch, not as severe as the Gothic ones that are in the other parts of the church. Flagstones on the floor. And the door, which goes to the outside world. And here we get a lovely view of that Gothic arch and very Gothic looking screen and the gothic arch that separates the altar area. This is a magnificently big church. It just tells you how grand it is and it's proud of it. And the walls not being painted seem severe but they're very solid. pleasing church, very pleasing indeed. And there we can get another view of that ceiling. Better view of the angel figures that adorn this church. Magnificent. step out into this very established looking and well kept churchyard that sits on the busy street in Woolpit and the name Woolpit incidentally not being from wool but coming from wolves who were apparently living in apparently living in pits. And here in the churchyard we find amongst the beautiful graves one which unfortunately has had its top cross knocked off. I feel sorry for that.
This one is brick. Unusual. More the sort of grave that you'd find in a, a city graveyard. In fact, many of these graves look as if they were in a city graveyard. There's another one here with brick, one with columns, another one unfortunately with the cross falling off. Study this wonderful church one more time and have a look at the closer look at that tower. And this porch with the checkerboard effect with made from flint and the stonework on the front. The very sophisticated work around the arch. At the top, the windows, there again, a mixture of stone and flint. An impressive and magnificent church in the middle of Suffolk.